Hey kids! Say no to drugs. The original roid rage man monster of the DC universe, Bane has had a real career of ups and downs as a Batman villain. He debuted in spectacular fashion, cracking the Cape Crusader's spine like a bony pencil during the epic Nightfall story. But in true one-hit wonder fashion, he's never equaled that stunning act, drifting through decades of comic book storylines that have depicted him as a reliably fearsome but always beatable brute. I'm Flumpy from WhatCulture.com and here are 10 things DC want you to forget about Bane. Number 10, Batman and Robin. Let's start with a really f***ing obvious one, shall we? So here's the thing about Bane. He's smart. Like, really smart. Chess master smart. He's big, yes, that too. He looks like 300 pounds of steak stuffed into a 100 pound bag. But what was initially interesting about the character is he had brain to complement the brawn. He only broke Batman because he strategically forced him to battle a city full of escaped villains first, SMRT. In Batman and Robin, he's thick as frozen pig sh reduced to moaning his own name and carrying Poison Ivy's bags. That bollocks. <laughs> Number nine, Robert Swenson's wrestler name. So in bollocks Batman and bollocks Robin, Bane is played by a wrestler called Robert Swenson. That makes sense, Bane's a chunky monkey. Wrestlers also tend to be big lads. It's just that they ended up picking a wrestler who happened to cause a small bit of controversy in the mid 90s. In WCW or World Championship Wrestling for the Uninitiated, Robert Swenson went by the name The Ultimate Solution. This was not the first name he wrestled under, that was the final solution. This caused an outcry because of course it f***ing did, and it's probably not something DC is keen on you remembering. Number eight, the friend zone memes. When the Dark Knight Rises happened and it was announced that Bane would be the main villain, everyone thought, thank God they're finally gonna do Bane right, make him his own man rather than second fiddle bag carrying lackey to the female villain. Oh, hello, Talia. Let's not be silly now. The depiction of Bane in Rises is much closer to how he appears in the comics. It's just they really cut his chance of being iconic when they revealed that instead of Santa Prisca, Bane seemed to spend his summers vacationing in the friend zone. Number seven, he got taken out by a chump. So Nightfall is hyped as a great comic storyline bolstered by one of the most iconic panels in Batman history. Truth is, a lot of the build-up is Batman fighting silly villains like the film freak, and then the replacement Batman, aka Azrael, aka Jean-Paul Valley, turns out to be a cold piss salad. Look at those shoulder pads, God help me. Worst thing is, Crap Batman, let's just call him Crap Man, went on to smack the living dick out of Bane, leaving him bloodied and broken. That's embarrassing. Number six, his huge obvious weakness, hit the tube. Like, look look at the tube full of his special Ribena. Just hit that. Even in The Dark Knight Rises, they couldn't have a Bane without a giant stupid weakness. Hit the fucking mask. That was Batman's entire character arc in Rises. He was broken and rebuilt, and the only thing that changed about his fighting style is that he lamped Bane on the mask that he really obviously needs to breathe, so why the fuck wouldn't you hit it, Batman, you idiot? Number five, he's from the Caribbean. Instead of something that DC actively wants you to forget, this falls more into the category of things that have either been retconned by the movies or just generally forgotten about in the comics. Bane grew up in a prison in Santa Prisca, a fictional island in the Northern Caribbean. So Bane is actually vaguely Spanish. Ish. In the movie, Tom Hardy's voice is, well, I don't really know how to describe it, but I wouldn't use the word Spanish. More like the love child of a posh English lord and a posh German lord and their kid was raised in a well. I haven't been to the Caribbean. Is, is, is that how they sound? Number four, he owns a beloved teddy bear. Look, we've all had a teddy. Mine was called Joe and he was excellent. Thank you very much. Turns out Bane, fearsome scourge of Gotham, master technician and merchant of muscly death, also had a little teddy. Look at it. Look at it. Oh, wait, that's Bane. Bane's backstory is that as a child, he was imprisoned for his father's crimes in infamously hellish prison Tenya Jura, which literally translates as hard rock. It's a hard rock life. For Bane, look, it was either that or a joke about doing time in a hard rock cafe. You are f***ed either way. So during Bane's time in that nightmare prison, he had a plushy best friend called Osito, a.k.a. Little Bear. Bless him. Bless that killer. Number three, when he learned to love. After going through a period of writers not knowing what to do with Bane, he was made a part of the Sinister Six, a Suicide Squad-like team of anti-heroes employed by the government in an excellent comic written by Gail Simone. Sinister Six was darkly funny and pleasingly strange, but they sure did mess around with Bane. He developed feelings of paternal love for one of the crew, a lady called Scandal Savage. He morphed from an intelligent, uncaring, unfeeling force of destruction and became more like an embarrassing dad, the sort who thinks all your friends are bad influences and decides not to let you go out and do fun stuff like hang around at the mall or go on life-threatening adventures to steal magical items from under the noses of other supervillains. Bane will break the Batman, but damn it, he wants you in bed by 11. 
Number two, he and Batman share a wife. Not like that. Well, maybe like that, but probably not like that. Turns out Dark Knight Rises isn't the first time that Bane's fallen in love with Talia al Ghul. He did so in the comics as well, except this time it was reciprocated all night long. Okay, it wasn't. Bane was initially engaged to Talia at Raj al Ghul's request when he impressed him in combat, but when Batman beats up Bane, the engagement's cooled off before it can be consummated Blue Bulls Bane again. Then Batman and Talia did the nasty, which led to Damian Wayne. And speaking of fathership, number one, they almost shared a dad. Not like they both almost had sex with a dad. Well, maybe they did, but they probably didn't. Instead, in a storyline called Tabula Rasa, Bane is on the hunt for his biological dad after discovering his real pa was an American doctor. Like, say, Dr. Thomas Wayne? Ooh, scandal! Apparently, Thomas Wayne had gotten close to Bane's mother on a trip to Santa Prisca, and it's unclear whether this was on an 18 to 30 holiday. However, after Bane and Batman did a paternity test, no, seriously, this is more like an episode of Jerry Springer than a comic storyline, it turns out that Bane and Bat didn't in fact share a popper. Unsurprisingly, this has not been mentioned since. And that's our list. Did we miss any out? Tell us about it in the comments. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter here. I'm Plumby from WhatCulture.com, and I'll see you soon.